Dear Diary, well, here we go. In two days' time, Globelink News will cease to exist. Everyone is handling it very differently. Damien has responded to the fear of redundancy by going on a solo expedition into the Amazon. Poor Gus is more in denial than ever, especially since last week's fire. <laughs> he has forbidden all mention of Sir Royston's name in connection with the mystery blaze. And as for me, well, there's been an unfortunate development. What unfortunate development? Excuse me? On Thursday, you're flying to Australia to start a wonderful new life with Sue. This is no time for unfortunate developments. Yes, I know, but, well, Margaret's been taken ill. She's had a minor heart attack. How very convenient. Helen, she couldn't fake a heart attack. Oh, come off it, George. Women fake orgasms every day of their lives. A heart attack's a doddle. She's really very poorly. She is no longer your wife. Yeah, I know, but... Oh, will someone please talk some sense into him? It's perfectly simple, George. Over here you have Susan, my niece, a wonderful woman who thinks all your orifices are solar-powered. <laughs> now, over here we have your former ball and chain, Margaret, a crab apple on legs. A woman who has always treated you like a cross between a doormat and a toilet roll. Now, if that's a dilemma, I'm the Pope's left bollock. <laughs> well, not exactly how I would have put it, but basically he's right, isn't he, Dave? Well, I hardly think Henry is in a position to lecture other people about the choices they should be making. What are you talking about? I'm talking about a man who has frequently pontificated about moral standards in broadcasting and who is now appearing as Wes Jasper's idiot stooge in a show where naked fat women attempt to play God Save the Queen on a Hammond organ with their buttocks. <laughs> well, that's right, you take the moral high ground. You who till last week were the gopher for the biggest race fixer in England. All right, you Well, two... unlike some, I got out. At least I'm not still being jerked around by some exploitative little shit. Oh, but you will be, because you basically are as weak as vegetarian piss. <laughs> you were born to be bucky fodder. Just look at yourself, man. You know, flat, no job, no future. You're Dave Charnley, professional nothing. We think that was very rude and uncalled for. <laughs> and obviously not true. Gus? I thought you'd like to see these. Our last set of viewing figures. We experienced an upturn last week. Really? Yes. 0.000017%. We're turning the corner, George, just as I predicted. <laughs> That fire wasn't started deliberately, you know. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, Bob. It was a tragic accident. Gus, the fireman said that someone filled the waste paper bin with petrol. Well, you know what this place is like. People chuck all kinds of stuff in the bin. <laughs> it was just sloppiness. Gus, it was an insurance fire. Well, it couldn't have been Sir Royston. <laughs> I'm going to prove you all wrong, George. I'm going to see Sir Royston in person. Straighten this out. But you'll never get to see him. He lives behind huge walls. And apparently he has these reinforced steel doors that slam shut whenever he feels threatened. And a private security force that shoots intruders. That was a misunderstanding. <laughs> Besides, those children shouldn't have been scrumping on his property. <laughs> but, George, 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 don't fret so. I know Sir Royston has not forsaken me. Hmm? <laughs> Any jobs in the offing? Just the one. My girlfriend's offered to employ me delivering sandwiches for her send-out service, the Sarni Army. Oh, well, that sounds, um... Humiliating is the word that you're looking for, George. And, uh, this is the catalogue for your new exhibition. Oh, I, I see you've mentioned me headbutting that critic. It makes me sound a bit disturbed. Well, you're an artist. You're supposed to be disturbed. <laughs> and ideally, you should have at least three mental illnesses and a missing ear. I, uh... I don't suppose you'd have dinner with me tonight. I mean, if I'm a non-starter, just say, I won't be offended. No, it's not that. It's, um... I'm just a bit wary of being messed about, that's all. Uh, dinner's fine. All right. I'll pick you up at seven. 
You like him, don't you? Yeah, well, he's not like other men I've met. In what way? Well, he listens, he washes, and he doesn't stare at women's asses. <laughs> this is the heart of darkness. The Amazon rainforest, deep in the territory of a fearsome Indian tribe, the Mahatawa. To get here, I have canoed 250 miles. Just me and my camera. An amazing feat of endurance, which I have achieved with no technical backup and unhampered by nervous illness. All I can do now is simply wait. Wait for my encounter with the mysterious and elusive Mahatawa, a tribe known as the Invisible People. Because, due to their tracking skills, you never know when they are close enough. Uh, no. No. No, it's not that I'm not grateful for your very kind offer, Amanda, my darling. It is just that... You... All right, yes. I am not prepared to cycle around London delivering banana, horseradish and seaweed sandwiches while wearing a black and white stripy outfit that makes you look like a sodding zebra. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Helena. I thought everyone had gone home. I... Oh. You look absolutely stunning. Yes, I do, don't I? <laughs> it's just a shame no one will see the dress, given that Gordon has banned all guests from my wedding. Though he did allow me to invite my parents. Oh, good. But sadly, they can't attend. Oh, right. Yes, they have a prior arrangement. They have to take some bottles to be recycled. <laughs> right. Now, your wife wrote in and nominated you for our... Most sexually inadequate man in Britain competition. <laughs> we do actually have a uh, six-page letter here from your wife. Um, which she writes all about how you can't get a stiffy. <laughs> actually, talking about useless pricks, did you see earlier that item we had when we got Vic, our researcher, to uh, eat a pizza topped with ham and swafiga and dry bogeys? <laughs> it was wasn't it, Henry, my main man? Well, it was OK. <clears throat> OK. Yep. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> I love this man, Nigel. Hey, Do you love me, my main man? Of course, dear boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you uh, show me how much you love me by taking off that wig? <laughs> what? Yeah, you heard me. I said, show me how much you love me by shedding the syrup. Huh? But we all want him to shed his syrup, don't we? Shed the yeah, syrup. come on. Shed, shed the syrup. syrup. Shed the syrup. Shed the syrup. Well, I'd rather not if it's all the same to you. Well, what you want doesn't matter, Henry, uh, because this is my show. But, uh... <laughs> Just hand it over, you old fool. Hey? <laughs> What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Hey? Hey? You want to say something? Come on out with it, eh? Come on, don't hold back. Say it. And the other thing my parents never explained was why they always told people I died in a car crash. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it's all this talk about parents and kids not talking to each other. You know, it's only three weeks since Dad died. And... Don't cry, Ellen. I'm sorry, it just creeps up on me sometimes. No, I mean, don't cry. I find it embarrassing. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I think if you don't mind, let's take the dress off. I'll, um... You're going to hear me! You're going to hear me sick! You're going to hear Henry ranting! And worst of all, you snivelling apology for a human being! You epitomise everything I've come to hate about the seedy, smug, digitally enhanced, patronising con man that is television! You're infantile, arrogant, odious, egotistical, insensitive, and totally vacuous! Time for a break! I haven't finished yet! Oh, oh, might as well pull up a chair, I think. This could go on for a bit. <laughs> But Mr. Mandelson denied having visited any such shop. <laughs> and so we come to the end of this final broadcast. And I would like to thank you 
the little people out there <laughs> leading your humdrum lives in the darkness who've given me such devotion over the years. Goodbye and bless you. Okay, the studio is now off air. Thank you, everybody. There we go. Well, say something, George. I don't know what to say. I'm not a natural orator like Henry. Oh, wasn't he magnificent last night? Well, he'll be totally unemployable now. He used the F word live on TV. Yeah, the F word, the B word, the effing being C word. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? We're about to have a party. Uh, I'm not in the mood. But it'll be full of drunk married women, your favourite. <laughs> Some other time, OK? Say goodbye to the others for me. How was your dinner with Vivian? He seems very pleasant. Yeah, seems nice, but I don't know. It's a big step placing your trust in someone. You have to trust people sometime. You trusted Margaret? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. And she abused that trust, didn't she? Time and time again. Exploited it to twist you round her little finger, didn't she? Excuse me, I have to make a phone call. <laughs> come on, come on, shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> this is Damien Day, deep in the Amazonian rainforest where the previously undiscovered Mahatawa tribe have made me a god. <laughs> yes, George, Gus, Helen, a god. They worship me all day, and my name is so holy that the last person to utter it was covered in honey and tethered over an anthill. Not something I think you'll find happens when you say Kate Ady. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> Obviously, Mother, I'm terribly sorry that I didn't become a professor like you wanted, but I suppose I'll just have to make do with being a god instead. <laughs> What, what? What are you doing? No, put that down. Leave the camera alone. Put it down. Look what they're going to sacrifice my bloody camera. No! no! No, Margaret, I've made up my mind. You've abused me, robbed me, stabbed me, had sex with most of my male relatives and crocheted obscene additions into my bunny cardigan. <laughs> You can't turn around and expect me to nurse you. Henry! I'm Henry. sorry I missed the last bulletin, but I've been imbibing a few bottles of bolly. The way you trashed Wes Jasper last night, we were so proud of you. Yes, even though it means you'll never work on TV again. Uh, that's right, I probably have burned all my boats there. But I don't give a monkey's, cos I've landed a brilliant job on radio! What? It's true, yeah, last night, as soon as I got home, the chief exec of Radio Gab rang me to offer me my own phone-in. A phone-in? Yeah, it's true, all I have to do is ridicule stupid comments made by morons. It'll be just like working here. <laughs> Only with a, a little more variety. Well, congratulations, Henry. A shrewd move. I've always said you have the perfect face for radio. And you, my dear, have the perfect face for trampolining. Touché. Or, in your case, toupee. My God, I... I'm going to miss this. No, Margaret. No. You're not going to make me feel guilty. No, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you're having another heart attack right at this very minute. You could gurgle all you like. <laughs> George Dent is off to be happy in Australia. <laughs> now we come to the vows. Do you, Gordon Julius Miller, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? <laughs> to have and to hold from this day... I do. And do you... Sally Smedley. She does as well. Uh, no, uh, the bride has to answer for herself. Do you, Sally Smedley, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? To have and to hold. I'm Gus Hedges, Chief Executive of Globe League News. Are you not down here? 
Have you got an appointment? Not as such. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nobody gets in without an appointment. Did you call me a nobody? No, I did not call you a nobody. I simply identified you as part of the great collective nobody. I... Now you listen to... That... I... <laughs> I've had enough! Do you hear me? Enough! Excuse me, sir. This is private property. Which they are! Yes. Oh, no, 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 it's all right. Well, I just wanted to get the dress on record. Sally. He'll make your life a misery. The man has no heart. No, you're wrong there, Helen. He does have a heart. But it has got a very weak aorta. <laughs> what? I felt it was my duty as a wife to get the full medical picture. And sadly, it appears that the wall of his pulmonary artery is so hardened that he could be struck down by a massive aneurysm at almost any moment. Sally! Coming. My dearest darling. It's all right, Miss Frobisher. It's all right. Why don't you return my calls? I have tried so hard to please you. People like me. We waste our lives for... For what? For a fat man! In a, in a big house! And what do we get in return? Broken minds. Dead souls. Scorched eyebrows. <laughs> well, let me tell you something! <laughs> Miss Frobisher, who was that man? <laughs> Look, it's been terribly nice to meet you all and to be a god and everything, but I really have to be getting back to civilization now to sell my story. <laughs> Good turnout. Isn't that the critic whose nose you broke? What's he doing here? Pushing his luck. Dave Charnley. I thought we'd seen the last of you. Yeah, well. Um, what are you doing? It's a piece of performance art. I put food in my pocket, take it home and eat it. I'm hoping to win the Turner Prize. Uh, have you checked out the Social Security? Yes, they think I'm dead. No, why? Basically because I told them I was dead. I sent them a fax a couple of years ago when they were after me for national insurance. <laughs> Look, it's Henry. Yes, Henry. Oh, Helen, dear girl. Allow me to introduce Veronica and Lizzie. They're the front runners for the vacancy as my studio assistant. Well, have you considered Dave? Dave who? Oh. So I told Margaret straight. I told her I felt no sense of misplaced duty towards her. Well, that's just as well, given that you and I are flying out to Australia tomorrow. Yes. You're my future, Sue. You make me confident. You make me happy. You keep my viral warts at bay. <laughs> Australia. Australia. 
to Joy and Merriweather. I trust that you'll be writing reams of purple prose about my discovery? Well, provided you keep those checks coming, I'll write whatever you want about her infantile scrawl. Police? Her naive minimalism? Yes, well, she must be naive not to realise how you're screwing her on the takings. Well, soon I hope to be screwing her in every sense. Personally, I blame the teachers. In fact, I took my eldest, Saskia, out of her last school because the headmistress there used to sometimes wear slacks. Yes, well, I'm sitting here trying to devise a suitably witty repast, but I think I'm just going to have to call you a stupid, stuck-up old tart. Would you like to come back on that, Lavinia? Well, uh, Well, you can't. Yeah. This is my show, and now my sexy and charming assistant is going to play some music. This land of broken dreams I have visions of many <laughs> But happiness is just an illusion Filled with sadness and confusion What becomes of the broken hearted Who had love that's now departed I know I've got time for. This is Henry Davenport saying cheerio and sleep well tonight unless you're Jeffrey Archer in which case may you sleep very badly and wake up with hemorrhoids the size of watermelons. <laughs> Come along then, Margaret. Let's go home. this one then. <laughs> 